The next activity we're going to look at Van Gogh's sunflowers. And we know that Van Gogh was a man of many moods or extreme moods. He had his ups and he had his lows. And we also know that when he painted, this is a time where he found peace. He was a very lonely um, character. He had struggled making friends and his happiest moments were when he was painting. And this is reflected in his work, especially in the sunflowers, which are bright and happy. So we're going to look at the sunflowers as paintings and have discussions with our students. And he did this motif several times, subject, so he painted him more than once. And we're also going to focus on sensory, how things feel. And we're going to do this by making Van Gogh's sunflower. The materials that you're going to use for this activity, let's have a look. We're going to have some cover paper for the background, buttons, which is finishing touches. We're going to use foam felt sheets. We're going to use a variety of papers, and this is going to pull an art language in when you look at the papers, which is why we're doing it, because we want it to have a sensory element. So when I looked at the papers, we have um, papers that are soft and furry, embossed, shiny, transparent, crinkly, thick, opaque, scaled, We've got bark papers, feather, patterned, texture. All those words that I've said, that's introducing an art language to your students. So you can actually spend a little bit of time going through those papers. And because this is lower levels, when you do use a word like transparency, you need to just stop and discuss what that word means. And when I use the word transparency, then I will use the opposite word. So then I'll talk about what is opaque. So if I said something was crinkly, then I would talk about what is smooth. If something is furry, then what is bumpy? And you can have a really good conversation with the students about the papers. Because this pa all these papers are sensory and they cut differently, they feel differently, they look different, they, they layer different. There's a whole different sensory element. And that's what we want. We want the students to be able to feel and see and experience all those papers. To start this activity, I have a piece of cover paper and a piece of felt. Now, I, I like to work on a square and I would not really get the students to cut the square. I would use your slicer and have that already pre-prepared, but I'm gonna just quickly cut that now. And also you don't want, we're gonna use felt, which is a soft material and you don't want to give the students a whole piece of felt. So I would say maybe a quarter, which you would have to probably pre-cut. And then from there, everything else is up to them to do. So here is a quarter of the felt. And as you have noticed, I'm not being perfect because you don't need to be. So we've got a square and a square, but we're looking for a circle. So. Students can cut a circle two ways, but remembering that they're young students, I would prefer the second way. So the first way is to fold and cut a semicircle. Um, that can actually be quite tricky. And the second way is to take the square and just cut just the corners off. And I think that would be easier. You could show them both ways and let them choose. But folding makes it thicker, and thicker is harder to cut. And these are the younger students. Also, the students, I with the grade ones and twos and the little kids, I have little scissors, but they can use these bigger scissors, and these are better for cutting the felt with. So just to snip at the corner. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle because we're going to be gluing petals on and you can cover up some of the edges. And when you show them this little technique, which is really simple, they love it. Okay, so I've made a pretty good circle. Okay, so that's gonna go in the middle. How am I gonna glue that? We're gonna use Super Tac. So if you haven't used Super Tac before, I'll just quickly tell you, I love this stuff. 
SuperTac is thickened PVA and um, why it's so good is you don't have to use much of it and it doesn't um, slide. So the thickened PVA keeps it in one spot. So usually you just spoon some onto a surface and I always give the students an icy pole stick or a toothpick. So because it's thickened PVA, it's strong and you don't need to use much. So you can show the students, you just need to go dot, 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 and that will be strong enough. And we're going to use this because we want the petals to float. So there's the first part. Now, I'm going to take you to this paper, and again, I wouldn't hand the students out the foam paper like this. I would have it pre-cut into smaller strips. And maybe thirds, and that's how I would hand it out or put it on the table for them to use. And this stops waste. So when you cut the foam paper, it's a beautiful feeling. So this is one of the first sort of sensory lessons. Now we're going to cut a petal shape. First, this is freehand. That's just being able to do it all by yourself, which a lot of people can't do. When I say people, I mean students. A lot of students, that will be difficult for the lower levels. So we need to teach the students some little tricks. One little trick that I like to do is a dot mark. So you do a dot in the middle, a dot in the middle, a dot in the middle, and a dot in the middle. And then you dot to dot and draw the petal shape. But doing the dots helps you keep it large. So that's another way. When you cut the foam paper, it is beautiful. It is so soft. And this is one of the sensory aspects. So I've cut freehand, I've cut using dots, and now we're going to use this to help cut the next one. So if a student can't cut, put this leaf on and use it as a template and cut around. And that's what you would do with a student that's really struggling. Okay, so now I have some petal shapes. I'm going to stick them down as I go. I'm going to cut and stick and cut and stick. And that way, if your students run out of time, you stop the activity and you can continue on next lesson. If they do all the cutting first and suddenly it's time for the bell to go, then you've got to store all the bits and pieces. So we're going to cut and stick. And I'm sure you've all experienced that, so a handy hint. So to, we don't want the whole petal stuck down. You just want a dob of super tack, remembering that it's quite strong, and then that connects to the center. And at the end, we want the students to be able to lift it. We, want, we don't want it completely stuck down. So I'll do that again. And if you do have black line, make sure that becomes the underneath and explain that to the students. So Dob, and I'm being a little bit symmetrical. Now, another way to cut, this is already pre-cut, is to do it in layers. So, you have done a, a template, you've done a free cut, and you've done the dot, dot, dot. This time, you can get the papers and cut more than one piece of paper at a time. Now, that in itself is very challenging for some students, and some will be able to do it and some will not. And sometimes it's helpful if the paper is folded because that paper was free, so it might slip in their hands, where if you get a piece of paper and fold it, I'm gonna draw the leaf, not the leaf, I'm gonna draw the petal. And the paper is folded, whereas this paper's not folded, so that could slip in a student's hand. Well, this is a little bit more stable because we're talking about the lower levels. Now, as I'm cutting this, I can feel the difference. 
Now let's try that one more time, but this time we're going to tear. So if a student can't cut, or you want to challenge a student, you can tear it. So I'm going to tear the petal shape, which is going to give me a sensory aspect and it's also going to give a completely different outcome. So torn to cut looks completely different. So let's stick some of these down. Okay, so I've done maybe three, four layers and um, maybe I got a little bit carried away. This is adult work. I can go really fast because I'm, I'm competent, but the students, they're going to be younger students, so they're going to go at their own speed. Some might only get one layer on, but this is where it's really good because the students that often need to be extended, they can work at their own pace and get to the second and third layer. You do want the students to get two layers at least.